What's up guys, YST here and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today, we are live on the test server to do a guide on Hoskaru, the Spirit Barbarian, Epic Champion, that we just had as a Fragment Fusion. Now in the comment section below, let me know, did you go for the fusion itself? Or was you one of the lucky people that summoned him early through a shard? Or do you just have no interest in this champion whatsoever? For me personally, when I seen that it had no summoning events and it was more free to play friendly to attain than previous fusions. I thought that was a pretty good thing and he was worth picking up as I don't think he's a trash champion whatsoever. Do I think he's super end game? Nope. Do I think he's a great progression champion? 100%. He's probably one of the best stun epics in this game. But we're going to break down the gear, the stats, the masteries and everything that I built on the test server for this champion. And also speak about other builds that you may want to put on your Husker rule. So alright, let's get into the kits. So on the Hermit Cudgel, attacks one enemy and has a 40% chance once booked of placing a stun debuff for one turn. Now an A1 stun is actually pretty decent, especially at a 40% chance for an epic. Being able to lock off specific targets, maybe in the Faction Wars or Doom Tower Waves. And some of these stats actually have some good damage multipliers which I'll talk about in a second. So from a speculative point of view, right, I actually feel like in the future of Raid, there's going to be some sort of mechanical boss where having a stun on A1 could be really crucial, as we've had Rorik Wormbane, the previous fusion. We then got Hoskaru. And it's just like, why do we have these stuns on A1? You know what I mean? I could just be reading it into too much, but when we talk about the rest of the kit, it actually does make sense. Um, on the A2 with a sustained beating, attacks all enemies and has a 75% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn and decreases the turn meters of enemies under stun by 15%. Now this is really really strong for an epic guys and there's actually a handful of legendaries that can actually do better than him in terms of chances to place a stun. And considering that if you place the stun how this kind of works is the stun goes out on the targets that you do happen to stun, it will actually decrease the turn meter in that same turn. So it's not like you place a stun, you gotta wait another cycle, and if somebody's under a stun, then you get the turn meter. It's just, you put a stun up, you then get the turn meter de depletion there. So really strong for an A2, which actually has good damage multipliers. Um, speaking about that, let me just quickly bring it up. So this is from hellhades.com. And if you see here, on the A1, a 3.85, which he has as an overall grading as godlike. And then we have a 4.1 on the A2 as well with the AoE. But we'll see that in action later. Um, on the unfaze, um, with the passive, or the A3, sorry, can remove all stun debuffs from all allies, will then place a 60% increased defense buff and a 25% increased resistance on all allies for two turns. Now, this is kind of where I said in the future of Raid, I do feel like there's going to be a place where having stuns on all abilities and having a way to strip the stuns is actually really, really strong. But obviously, it's not in the game as of now. I'm talking about content that's in the game right now. There's only the clan boss, which I don't think this champion is going to be good at. Um, we then have faction wars and doom tower waves, for instance, where some random enemies like to stun you, right? And he's able to kind of strip that off. But also in the Hydra boss, I feel like, why is there increased resistance in here? Because increased resistance for me only screams two places in this game primarily. And that will be the Iron Twins Fortress, higher stages of Doom Tower bosses, or um, Hydra boss. It's kind of the main places I would use it. it is, it's just very weird to me that it's on this champion of all champions in the game. But having an increased defense to amplify the damage of his A1 and A2 is actually really cool as well. Um, to kind of coincide with that A3 though, with the finish default passive, he's immune to stun debuffs. Now, very similar to Rorik, right? Being immune to those stun debuffs, allowing him to tank those stuns, cleanse off your allies, increase their defense and resistance, come through with CC and nuke abilities with turn meter control. And he also increases the damage inflicted by all allies by 15% when attacking enemies under stun. And this is why I think he's a very strong epic champion. Because he's not just amplifying the damage of himself. He's actually increasing the damage of all of your allies when they're attacking people under stun, which he places in his own kit. Uh, faction crits by 30%. I wish it was all battles, but a lower chance. But it is what it is, right? 
But overall, in terms of this champion, I like him. I really do. I think the way to attain him was great. I think he looks great. Um, he's in a decent faction, Barbarians. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys have a big bunch of uh, ones in the faction wars there. But we do have Scylla the Drakes and people like Archmage Helmet, right? That can really fulfill a stun roll on your accounts. I completely understand why people wouldn't go for it. But... For me, I always say if it's attainable for you to get a champion and it's easy to get and you've got the resources, it's probably just worth picking it up, right? Especially that it's a fragment one that you can save for CVC. But okay, um, talking out the way of the kits. Sorry about that, guys. I just like to break down kits kind of in depth. Um, today, I built him in a savage build to try and ignore some defense as I actually do cl um, class him as a CC slash Nuka champion. But... Do you need Savage? Hell no. You can go Relentless Builds, Perception for Accuracy. You can go Regeneration, keep him sustaining and tanky. You can go Star Wars, Defiant Sets. A champion like Hoskaru is very, very universal, I'd say, in terms of what you can provide on his kit. But um, if you do want to deal damage, of course, if you've got some spare Savage laying around and you want to have some fun, um, that's basically what this video is going to showcase. Um, so we can showcase it in Dungeons. So we've gone for like speed, crit damage, crit rate and substats, crit damage on the gauntlets, defense percent on the boots and the chest plate because he is a defensive based champion. I've got accuracy on the banner, crit damage on the amulet and defense on the ring. Now I did try my best not to put my best gear on. So I've kind of sat at 200 speed, which is relatable. Uh, we've got 4.7k defense, which is kind of hard to not get much lower than that with boots and chest. And then 100% crit rate, of course, 227% crit damage, and just enough accuracy to place debuffs uh, where I want to use it. Uh, Masteries today... I actually, I think this is one that I highly do recommend. Well, there's two ways. Well, this is kind of more of a damage build, going down to Helm Smasher to coincide with the Savage pieces. I did some counter attacks to proc out that A1 for stuns. But if you just care about stuns, right... You could be going to Fearsome Presence, which gives you an extra 5% chance to play stun debuffs. Which can actually make his A2 an 80% chance, right? Or if you're just going up against bosses, War Master could be a thing for like the Faction Wars, right? But in terms of this showcase, we're going for pure damage. Now, time for a hypothetical build. Let me know if this is something you guys want me to do in a future... Well, in future showcases on the test server, right? So, let's just go into something that's more... I'd say non-damage orientated and what you could do. So you go into your filters, right? Let me just leave myself here. I think that makes sense. So you can see the stats too. So fitting room, we're going to go for... Let's just say crit rate gauntlets, right? You can't get your crit damage. That's completely fine. So let's just go here. Get some five star pieces. Let's try to get almost a defense percentage in there as well. There we go. That's a nice one. It's got some crit damage on it. And then we're going to try to get some defense percent boots. And chest plate. All right, here we go. Um, so you could just go for... See, for me, perception is so attainable for so many players. And it gives you speed and accuracy, allowing you to place those stuns and get the speed for your champion. So you could go something like this, right? You can go for, like, um, defense with some speed. Um, you could look for some crit rate and crit damage in the substats here. Um, have we got any here? Let's have a look. Uh, in terms of... Okay, this is the only one that's got some speed and some crit rate in it. Let's just do this. So we got that on. And now let's take this off. And now let's just take off some more perception going. So let's see what else we got here. Boom. And then we can go for like a chest plate, maybe some defense in there. There we go. We've got some defense percent. That's great. And then we can go for some more. Do we need some more crit rate? No, we can lose some crit rate and up some speed, which is great. So you can go for something like this, right? So now we've got 240 speed, we've got perception, and we now have so much more accuracy to be able to place our debuffs in the higher stages of the Doom Tower. So if you're looking for a more speedy, tanky approach, and you don't want to go full damage, this could be a route that you may really want to go. But as I said, very universal. So, all right, um, that was the gear, the stats and the masteries and everything that I would build on my Hoskaru on my main account. And let's go into a few areas of the game and... Have a lot of fun with him. That's the main point of this video. Let's get into it. All right, guys. So usually I would go into a campaign battle to showcase the skills. But um, we're just going to showcase the mechanics. And I think that's very important. Because 
Um, the way that the A2 reads, it's like the stun has to be up first in order to place the turn meter, which is true. But the way that I first read it was you can't deplete the turn meter in that same turn, if that makes sense. But that full stop definitely made a difference in that. So let's just do this. So boom. See that? The stuns went up and the turn meter in the same ability. So the way that it's working is the stuns are going out. It, the game kind of reads, all right, this champion got the stun. You can now deplete the turn meter. So let's just go through here. Increase defense. Um, there's the A1. We'll do a damage test in a second as well, which will be pretty cool. So there we go. Multiple stuns, which means multiple turn meter depletion. And if you have other allies in your team, they'll be hitting harder against these enemies by 15%, which is substantial. So there we go. That was pretty cool. We showcased the mechanics there. Now, this one here is going to be a damage test that I've set up for you guys. I actually already recorded this at this point in the video. I checked back in my edit and I didn't put the increased defense on. So you didn't do this full capabilities here. So let's go for a round two. So we're going to go drop defense and weaken. Oh, let's do a shield. Doesn't really matter. Let's do an A1 here. A1 here is all good. We need to get the increased defense up. There we go. Let's do an A1. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Let's do this. Poisons. Put the poisons on ourself. And now he's going to come through with the big boy hit now. Hopefully. So, three, two, one, AoE. Wow. So, 173,000. Now, without the increased defense, if anybody's wondering what that actually hit, it was around 95 to 100,000. So the increased defense definitely amplified it from what I was seeing in the previous run. So yeah, let's get into the actual full team for stage 25. So let's get into it. Stage 25, guys, using a recent epic fusion, obviously Hoskaru. We've got um, a Husk here for max HP against the boss. We've got Soy Ren, the new Shadowkin epic for drop defense. And then we've got Ultimate Death Knight, the free daily login champion, alongside Silit the Drakes, which you can attain from the daily login as well. But just a different one, the normal daily login. And this team here, because we've got so much stuns, we're going to have so much CC, they're going to be able to get through stage 25 without a problem, right? Because we've got everything we need. We've got sustain, we've got extra damage through passives. We've got increased defense, increased resistance, and it's just going to turn out to be a whopper of a team. This team here is actually doing a lot better than I thought. Like, 1 minute 47 to get through the way with a team like this is actually pretty substantial. I'm actually anxious to see, will he outperform a Husk? Because he's got AoE stuns. He's got max HP against the boss. But will he be doing more damage than our buddy Huskerul here? Because I think that's a pretty good comparison, especially for waves. Because um, Husk has Provoke A1s for locking out, and then he's got the stuns. So I feel like they're very similar, apart from taking that max HP out of the equation. So here we go. Not too bad. And because we've got the increased resistance on, we're able to resist those poison debuffs, which I think is really solid. So let's go. Decreased attack coming out. Drop the fence. We've got some weakened from Soy Ren as well. This is a very solid champion. I really like that epic, by the way. If any of you guys manage to get her, especially for faction, well, she's actually really great. Um, here we go. Not doing too bad. I think it should be around a three minute run, but three minutes. And of course, if you guys have better champions, He's going to be able to come through with Scylla the Drakes and absolutely wreck here. All right, come on, guys. You got this? He's about to hit you with the big nukes, but we need some support here. Here's our weaken. I love Ultimate Death Knight's animations. They're pretty cool. There we go. No problems. Look at this. All right, we just need one. Oh, we're getting some weak hits. I'm not sure if he's got no gear on. That could be... A, actually, I think he's probably not crit capped. Definitely not crit capped. Maybe I took some gear off for another video. Who knows? That's what happens, guys, when you're on the test server. So we capped out here at 3 minutes 25 seconds. He was on par with Husk, who had max HP abilities. Pretty substantial. Now, the Husk isn't fully optimized, as you guys seen there. But just for some comparisons... I think he did pretty well, outperforming everybody apart from Soy Ren, of course, who has the AoE drop defense and the poisons, and the husk. So, really nice there. So, heading into the faction wars, we are now on stage 21, and of course, this will be the main place you may want to use him, as he's got a hefty aura by 30%. And we're going to use the um, 
Where'd you get this guy? The Bazaar? One of the clan shops or something for the fragments of your cow. Well, still at the Drakes, a Valor who is a prime champion. We got Oltan for increased defense just throughout the run. And then we got Hoskaru. So let's see how this one can go. And another thing that I'd say is, guys, if you want to do the Spider's Den, he could be a great stun champion, right? For progression. Because you're unable to put out a burn with somebody like a Mordecai, right? Be able to lock out those Spiderlings and completely demolish. But in that kind of build, you want to make sure that he's not built for damage. Pretty much any stun champion can fulfill that role, like an Astralon or an Archmage Helmet. But if you don't have those champions, of course, he could be a great option for you. So look at this. Locking out Man Eaters, locking out um, a Steel Skull. And he's going to be able to come through and just keep them under control. So it's not tedious for us on a daily basis, especially when you're doing Stage 21 on CVC, where you see the best return in terms of points. And you just want to save some time because you guys know how long it is to play Raid every day. He's going to come through and just completely tank for your whole team and allow you to put more damage stats on because he's going to be having them under stuns. So let's go. Got 57 seconds, guys. There we go. Tell me uh, depletions on both of the ads there. But the only downside here now is going to be that because you can't stun the boss, you can't actually manipulate the term eater. But apart from that, he is going to be dealing some nice damage. Look at that A1, guys. Absolutely crushing it. There we go. Um, no matter of time, we're at 50%. Should be about two and a half minutes or so. We've got to provoke, but that's no problems because this A1 has a godlike uh, manipulation there. Come on. Drop defense coming out from Valor, which is pretty much what I like to use her. I was going to use Rorik Wembane in the same team, but then I thought, that's just, you won't be able to see the full utility. Let's see if we can get some resisted here with the increased resistance. Boom. One more hit. Can we get the final hit? Oh, nearly 70k though. Bam. 49,000 damage and he capped out at... 1 million almost, outperforming even your Cole, who actually was built for damage. So very, very strong champion in terms of Barbarian Faction Wars. So the final place that we're actually going to showcase is going to be the Doom Tower. This is floor 100 of the Hard Doom Tower, or floor 101, using Ultimate Death Knight, Soy Ren. We've got Knock the Paralyzer, the new um, CC slash Poison Champion. Uh, you can use anyone there. Still the Drakes and a Hoskaru. And hopefully here, you can see how much utility they can have together. There we go. Uh, Ultimate Death Knight pretty much going to be eating everything up, which is cool. Now, Hoskull just needs to come through with some AoE abilities. He's a bit slow for this, but increased resistance allowing us to take less debuffs. There we go. We're getting resisted here, which is pretty nice. There we go. Look at all of those resisted on all of our allies. Boom. We've got CCs. We've got stuns. Now, he's going to come through. Bam. Big smacks. And if you think about this being the highest stages of the hard doom tower, using very attainable champions. Now, as I said, knock the paralyzer, not needed here. You can pretty much use any other CC, burn, or uh, taunting, provoke champions. It will just take a little bit longer. But for the sake of this video, and he applies the sleep himself, I thought he'd just be a pretty one cool one to showcase. But yeah, sustaining really well here. There we go. We're getting a bit of resisted because we only have 230 resistance, which is unfortunate. I should have done a lower floor. Look at him go. Come on. We need one more big nuke here, buddy. Oh, he wants to put the increased resistance on. Now, this one's without presets. Boom. Got some points out. Bam. Big hits going out. But yeah, in terms of this champion overall, is he endgame? Absolutely not. Is he great for progression? I think he's really, really strong. But you guys can let me know in the comment section your thoughts on this champion. And that is going to be all for today's video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that like, subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.